How you doing, family? And per usual, black love, black pride, black power. Remember to cancel those subscriptions to White Supremacy Weekly and subscribe, like, comment, and share the videos and shit on my channel. Um, also, do me a favor and check those eagles at the play button. Now, we have to know ourselves, to love ourselves, to love our people, and I will be just diving into the next topic, um, which is the topic of this video. My black ass attitude. Okay, I, this is going to be a little bit, it's going to be a bit fun for me. I'm going to try not to run over, but it is going to be a bit fun for me, y'all, because this has been coming up a lot in my personal life daily. I'm always hearing shit like, oh, especially from black men, but oh, black women have attitudes, black women are rude, they're mean, and especially, especially when they're talking about dark-skinned black women. You know, the lighter ones or the browner ones, they might get stuck up or this or that. You know, they get called those names or whatever. But just in general, when it comes to the word attitude, it is normally synonymous with black women and then subcategorized as dark skinned black women. But let me tell you, let me tell you boo boops about my black ass attitude, okay? Because we like to pretend like people just got attitudes out of nowhere. First off, first and foremost, you can't go around here getting on people's nerves and expecting them to not to have an attitude, okay? And oftentimes, these attitudes, these quote-unquote attitudes are a form of protection. I'm going to just dive right into it. Um, the form of protection, we'll get into that first. I know what I look like, okay? Pretty fabulous. You know, I have a desirable body type and whatnot, and it'd be hot as fuck. And I'd be dressing like an African. I show a lot of skin, this and the third. And people are always looking at me, especially men of all races are always looking at me. And it's damn near predatorial, to be honest about the situation. So um, to, to keep them from approaching me or to keep them from thinking that, you know, I'm approachable and coming at me with the fuck shit or whatever, or even to um, to keep them from, from thinking that, that they have a chance to take advantage of me or whatever, I have to at times throw on this face this or I look down or I look away or I roll my eyes or I pretend I'm busy not because I'm mean not because I'm a bitch not because I'm bitter this and the third in fact I'm very approachable and very nice and very friendly but because I'm sensing danger or something uncomfortable and I do not want to give you my energy or let you think that you are invited into my space now when I was younger um, into my early teens, mid teens, or whatever, you know, people would tell me after they got to know me all the time, they'd be like, Oh, you know, when I first saw you, I thought you were gonna be mean, I thought you were gonna be like a bitch or whatever, I thought you were gonna be angry or, or bitter, this and the third. And I'm like, What? How? I have never given anybody a legitimate reason to feel that way about me. But I'm tall, I'm dark skinned, you know, I have African features, etc. So when I would hear that a lot, I got to the point where I would purposely always walk around with a smile on my face <clears throat> whether people deserved it or not and when people wanted to talk to me even if I did not want to talk to them even if I did not feel like talking to them or whatever I didn't want them thinking that I'm just another angry bitter black woman so I would converse with them anyway even though at times people wouldn't realize it but they were being disrespectful or they would say some pretty rude things but in their head is a compliment and that or some people were just straight up douche monkeys you know, but I still felt compelled to defy the stereotype that black women are, are mean and they're angry and they have attitudes or whatever. So I would deal with shit. Everything from bums, strangers, you know, dust buckets on the train and shit. Giving these people the time of day simply because I didn't want them to think that I was some angry, bitter, mean black person. When in all actuality and honesty, they did not deserve anything but an attitude. They didn't even deserve my time of day. Let's be real. Not everybody deserves your time and energy. You know? So, as I finally understood that, you know, and I'm still, <laughs> I'm only 22, but still in my early 20s, but I, um, over the past several months, I've been understanding that you don't have to be jolly jai for everybody because not everybody deserves that. Not everybody has earned that, you know? So, when I'm out and I'm looking a certain way or I'm in a certain environment and I know that the people around me are not necessarily people that I feel comfortable with all the way or fully trust or, you know, just want to give that kind of energy to, 
I'm going to be short with you. I'm going to be, uh, and, and for the persistent niggas, you got to be, and that's another thing. I'm going to get to the, I'm going to get to the, um, the warranted necessity of it too. I'm right, I'm right now I'm still talking about protect, protection. You got to be a little jaded <clears throat> or you have to know when to ignore people or when to look down or when to not engage in that contact because, you know, you never know what, who's got going on, whose intentions, whose motives, who's whatever. And especially because most times when people see me, the, <coughs> excuse me, the first thing they think of is sex. It's dark skinned black women are the most hypersexualized women on this planet. So even if you didn't have a nice shape, you know, even if you aren't extra curvy, you're still a dark skinned black woman. So the first thing they're going to think is sex, promiscuity, nothing but a physical interaction with. And that dates all the way back to the, the breeding plantations um, that they had during slavery. But that's another topic and another time I will be touching on it if I haven't already. So, you know, some, sometimes you need to, to be that, that jaded and whatnot just for your own, you know, general social safety. Uh, you know, things like, you know, I, I deal with people rolling up on me, rolling on the window saying, you know, trying to holler at me or trying to give me jumping, especially Hispanic men. They're always, you know, following me in cars while I'm walking down the street, always trying to holler at me, always trying to give me. And I'm like, I'm, no, that shit's not happening. And I'm not going to sit there and just to defy a stereotype of, you know, having an attitude or being bitter or angry. I'm not going to sit there and come close enough to the car for you to snatch me up even follow me for 10 blocks. I'm not going to sit there and, you know, engage in your antics and potentially put my life and my well-being in danger. I'm sorry that shit's not happening just to defy a stereotype. That is, it is a defense one and a protection. Other times, it's just a deflector from the fuck shit, okay? A lot of black women, we do not naturally have attitudes. We do not wake up in the morning and decide to be an asshole to you today. You just happen to be on some ain't shit shit when you approach me. Let's be real. Niggas love to say that black women have attitudes and leave out the fact that they're annoying as fuck and be on some fuck shit sometimes. And we know I'm not talking about all black men. I Like I say all the time, I have some very wonderful African men in my life, continents and diasporic. And they make sure that I'm treated like the queen that I am with the utmost respect. I'm talking about your average Joe nigga walking down the street, okay? This is what happens. This is how black women get that label of having an attitude. A man who don't got shit to offer you and your life come up to you basically only trying to get into your pants. And the second we turn them down, we're a bitch. We're attitude. We ugly, we dark skin, we this and that. We should be grateful you even talking to us. This is the shit that happens to us sometimes. Shit happens to me. And that's the thing. When I turn people down, especially black men, I'm so friendly about it. I'm so nice and smiley. I throw all the agave nectar and that 100% maple syrup on that bitch just so I make sure that I don't bruise your ego while I'm politely telling you that I am not interested in you right now in that way. And just because a black woman tells a nigga no, she got an attitude. She a bitch. She this. She that. And this is, it's, it's insane. The psychology of it, I still can't quite grasp. It's insane. How is it? Because a lot of times, these black women that have attitudes literally just told you no. They tell you no, we got an attitude. And then, other times... You know, a man, you know, um, a man will approach it, especially in the Bay. We got the thirstiest niggas in the world in the Bay. I don't, I don't know what it is. I'm sorry. I, I, if I got people who watch my videos in the Bay, you niggas know you be thirsty as fuck. You know you do. You know, just, it is what it is. And maybe, and I'm not from the Bay, so maybe the girls from the Bay, like, that works for them, or that's like the dynamic y'all got, but I'm not from the Bay, so when I'm up there, and I'm dealing with y'all persistent as, like, Bay niggas are so persistent. Like they are the most persistent, well, among the most persistent group of black men that I know. The ones concentrated in the Bay. We can go ahead and add Continental Brothers with that too, because I know some Continental Brothers, especially um, uh, Congo and Nigeria. I've noticed that are extremely persistent. Caribbean Brothers, extremely persistent. It's like, and especially if you're nice. Especially if you're nice, they're going to be persistent and they're going to push it. They're going to push and push and push and push and push until you finally give them what you want, which is half the time it's just your number, you know, or, or, or a date or your time or something. It's just like, I, I don't even want... For example, I'm walking from Whole Foods. I'm in Oakland. 
I'm walking from Whole Foods or whatever. I'm heading over to like um, Marietta or whatever to, to eat my salad and, you know, sip my water and whatnot and get some sun time before going to this black on an operated establishment that I had an appointment at at 8. And um, I get stopped by, I get stopped by an elder brother. You know, he's, he's probably like late 40s, early 50s and whatnot. And he's also just nowhere near my type. And he's out of shape, and he had just put out a cigarette. I just holistically wasn't interested. Now, mind you, I can't walk a full block in the bay without three or four dudes trying to mack me down. Okay, this this elder catches me. You know, he tells me to come here. I'm like, look, man, I'm really not trying to watch. He's like, no, it's not like that. It's not like that or whatever. And I see him start to roll up the trees. I was like, where? Okay, well, if you trying to share your trees, pass me some, and I'm gonna go on by my business and smoke this bowl at the lake right there whatever the case may be. So, um, we're briefly chopping it up. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, and I let him know, you know, I have a boyfriend. I know. But I, you know, I'm seriously dating somebody or whatever. So I let him know, you know, I'm not interested or whatever. And he keeps pushing. And he's like, well, just take my number down. We could just be friends. I'm like, no, because we probably, we can't just be friends. I had, I'm pretty sure you have no intention on just being my friend. You did not stop me because you wanted to be my friend. You know, let's just be real about the situation. Like, there's no need to exchange numbers. I've let you know I'm not interested. Been nice this whole time about it. But when you're nice about it, a lot of dudes take that as an avenue to keep pushing. Sometimes... Sometimes you have to be a little mean. Sometimes you have to be a little rude because some dudes don't get it unless you are. And that's something that I'm working on because it's really hard for me to be mean to my people, guys. It is. But I'm going to have to get good at it real soon because I'm tired of people bullying me out of my phone number, bullying me out of my social media, bullying me out of my time because you're persistent and I'm too nice. You know? However, if the man was um, calling me or whatever and I didn't come by and have like a casual conversation or whatever or, you know, if I just flipped my hair and kept walking or if I just, you know, scrunched my face up and kept it pushing, all right, then black ass bitch, or the case of me, or, you know, oh, you know, that's why we don't fuck with black women anyway, y'all got them damn attitudes or whatever kind of shit. And even if he didn't say it out loud, he probably would have been thinking the shit. But ultimately, but guess what, though? He may have had a sour opinion of somebody because they didn't want him, but I would have had my time, I would have had my energy, and I would have had my sanity. <laughs> you know, a lot of the you know, brothers on on the boulevard out in Hollywood and stuff pressing me for my number, and I'm too nice to um, you know, and and I do say no, but it's like you know, people when you're nice, people are persistent. No matter how many times you say no, if you say it nicely, they're gonna keep fucking trying you. You know. And when you let them know, look, I'm not interested in like that, you know, I've got my own thing going on. I, I've been lying about having a boyfriend <laughs> for like the past three years now. <laughs> and growing up, I never thought I would be that person who has to lie about having a boyfriend. In my teen years, I never had to lie about having a boyfriend. It wasn't until, you know, I hit like about 20 and people started finding me desirable across the board that I had to start lying about having a boyfriend because niggas wouldn't leave me the fuck alone. You know? And now it's bad. It's so bad, y'all. It's to the point where it'd be like, you know, things will be, they'll do shit like, you know, you say you have a boyfriend, okay, and you don't got no ring, though. I'm just all the way dead. I might as well just continue to fall off the chair of how dead I am, because that has been the, the hugest thing lately. Men, seriously, you know, me going around and telling men that I'm in a committed relationship, you know, and they say, oh, but you're not married, though, so that don't mean nothing. And I'm like, well, to me, it does. If I have a boyfriend and I'm in a committed relationship, that does mean something to me, you know? But the fact that we have our brothers to the point where they don't even care if you say that you're committed to your relationship, they're still going to try and get at you. And then you wonder why some women skip that whole chunk of BS and decide to go straight towards, uh, try it, uh, not interested, uh, rule, you know, or just don't speak, you know, or just completely rudely shut you down because niggas don't get that shit no other way sometimes. So as we've discovered in this conversation, there's about three reasons why black women have these attitude problems. The first reason is 
we don't have an attitude problem. We just didn't tell you what you wanted to hear or we just told you no, even if we did so politely and you decided that because we rejected you, we have an attitude problem. The second reason is because of literal self-defense and protection away from predators who may be, you know, looking at you a certain kind of way or trying to stalk your this and the third and you're really just trying to go unnoticed for a second to get your life. The third reason is because we've tried being nice with y'all heifers time and time and time and time and time again and you keep, 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 keep pushing and then finally we're like, you know what nigga, let me just read you your whole life and then maybe you'll leave my ass alone. So, um, that is three of the major main reasons for my black ass attitude. Um, per usual, black love, black pride, black power. Like, comment, to share, and subscribe. Um, be sure to watch our other videos too. Cancel that subscription to White Supremacy Weekly. Do me a favor and check those egos at the subscription button, which is what most of these niggas need to do when a black woman needs to tell them. Before you step to a black woman, check that ego. Is my ego in check? Yeah, we cool. Ego, you straight? I'm straight, you straight? Okay, now let's approach a black woman with some damn sense. And let's be okay if we don't get exactly what we wanted from the situation. Okay? Check the egos. And as usual, you have to know yourself, to love yourself, to love your people. Love you, fam. Peace.